Saturday afternoon. Brock Daniels leads off. Brady Tiger ready, and we are underway with a wave and a miss. Our plate umpire, Danny Cricks, here this afternoon. Brandon Cooper at first, Nathan Huber at second, Morris Hodges will be at third. So Daniels did not see any action yesterday. St. Louis native, one game a year ago. Started with Oklahoma back in 2022. Felt right at the plate. So for Tiger, remember he started game two of that twin bill last Saturday when we played a pair of games and went four scoreless innings. 88 pitches, though, Troy. He had to throw a lot of pitches to get through his four innings. Yeah, that, that, that fastball kind of got away from him just a little bit. Had to lean on the breaking ball and the changeup a little bit more. Two strike pitch, cut and a missed. He begins the game with a K. That really nice changeup right there by Brady Tiger. You can tell the difference as a starter than a reliever. He was pretty much fastball breaking ball, but he's mixed in that changeup and he'll throw it especially against those left handers. This is Trevor Austin, seven home runs, including four last weekend. How about that big slow curveball? Austin yesterday had a double in the fourth inning against Hagen Smith, but he struck out twice. Was he the only guy that got an extra base hit? I believe so. Because two of the singles were infield singles. No, Curtis had the double late. That's right. And he's not in the lineup today. High pop-up. Sunglasses on, glistening. But Aloy makes the catch. Pop-up's always an adventure here at Baum Walker. Fahiva had that one measured. And Jackson Lovich will bat. Younger brother of Ross. Had a single and a walk, couple of strikeouts yesterday. Really battled Hagen Smith in the fourth inning when he struck out. He might have fouled off six or seven pitches. Big brother Ross said before the game today, he goes, you know, he had a pretty good game, but that's how I like it, where he can have a quality at bat, but not get the numbers or not that's get the right. hits. <laughs> Feel good about himself, but uh, still 0 for 2. Don't <laughs> do any damage against us. Yeah, actually 1 for 3, but he'll take it. Yeah, that was a really great at bat against uh, excuse me, against Hagen Smith. How do you hang in there against that breaking ball? It starts to flutter and the knee moves and I mean, Ross has probably seen that a few times facing Brady, but uh, brother is a right-handed hitter and he didn't care for that one. Well, I think as a hitter you give up on it so early cuz it's so high. Great location right there by Brady Tiger, the bottom left part of the zone. Here's your defense for the Razorbacks. Hold at third base today, rolled in behind the plate. Here's the one two. Big breaking ball, strike three. That pitch is almost unhittable. That thing had a parachute on it, Brad. A little hand. Boy, again, if we were playing at night and you'd turn the lights out, you'd still see those jerseys. Arkansas with the pinstripes. Stovall steps in. And the first pitch a little bit in for ball one. Arkansas had just seven hits yesterday, but when four of them clear the fences, and they're all multi-run homers with the exception of Sousa's last, you can jump up the run column quickly. Yeah, Arkansas really took advantage. A hit batter and then the first home run by Souza. Then the fourth inning, a walk to Stovall. Diggs hit a home run. And Arkansas has 21 homers on the year. 17 have come in this homestand, which concludes tomorrow. Kendall had one of those blasts. He's ready to go already. Two and one to Stovall. Just about got him missed in. Seems like Missouri's really gone inside to Stovall, really trying to tie him up a little bit. And he did get plunked. 
Looked like he was going to get hit on the previous pitch. That time he wears one, and you wouldn't uh, blame Peyton if he was a little bit nervous about getting hit by a pitch. It's the 20th time this year Arkansas has worn one. And right in the back. There's Between no, the one and the zero. There's no way to get out of the way of that one. Well, we got a battle of Hawaiians here. Vahiva Aloy, Javen Pimitaw. And that pitch carries a little bit outside and misses to Vahiva's, batting 224 with a couple of home runs. Reached base a couple of times yesterday, but went 0 for 3. Did score a run. Flied out to the warning track and left. Fell back and out of play. Arkansas winners of 11 straight trying to make it a dirty dozen of wins and win this series as well. 40th all time meeting with Mizzou. Pretty good pitch over the inside corner for a call strike at 90 on the gun. This Missouri outfield is playing Vahiva Aloy very deep. He's got tremendous power to all fields. Stovall at first, no one gone. And that's strike three. Inside corner. Really nice pitch to work the parameters of the zone from Pimentel to get the K. And his fellow Hawaiian. Kendall Dick steps in, and Troy, we were talking. I think you're almost out of gas. No, I can get this guy. <laughs> that's what Kendall Diggs did. So sometimes it, uh, your heart is a little bigger than what your arm can do. Yeah, Coach Jackson gave his starter a chance, and you felt like maybe he was a little bit uh, out of gas indeed. And Kendall made him pay with what was his fourth home run. You see Kendall's numbers. It's amazing now as we featured him in the open last night how he's atop the leaderboard in pretty much most of the team categories. For a while it was Sprague Lott. Now Sousa has the best batting average, but Kendall has the most runs scored, the most hits, the most walks, the most doubles, the most home runs. It's kind of what you expect uh, from Kendall Diggs. And Again, he just goes about his business. Great jump from Stovall. Get a decent throw, but not in time. Hernandez has got a tremendous arm and gun behind the plate, but Stovall got a really good break to get his first of the year. Yeah, Pimentel is just a little bit slow to the plate, about 1-5, one, 1-6, one, and Hernandez did all he could do. He threw a dart down there, and boy, you talk it about was a bang, bang play. Chance for Arkansas to strike first. Good pitch again. Strike three called again. Pimentel's painted a couple of strike threes. Yeah, he's done a really nice job working that outside corner away from Diggs right there. Clearly a strike and just dotted it. Peyton Holt gets the start. Sprague Lott was at third yesterday against the right-hander. Now Holt starts against the lefty. Batting 372, and there's a chopper foul wide of first pass Lovich. Coming into the series yesterday, Arkansas's two best batting averages were the two guys in essence kind of competing for playing time at third base with Sprague Lott and Peyton Holt. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a battle over there. Uh, trying to figure out who's who's got the hot hand either at the plate or with the glove. You think it might be predicated on what type of starting pitcher they're facing for a while? Could be. Pitches up and out from the lefty. Then you just kind of feel like that Holt is just kind of that energizer bunny, that spark plug to that lineup. Maybe just a little bit more than the Sprague lot, but they've both had really good seasons so far. Well, that sweeper almost came through him. Just about hit that front elbow, didn't it? No guard for Holt. See if Arkansas can get a run without a homer. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do that yesterday. Outfield very deep all weekend, so a base hit should easily score. Stovall on the count is going to three balls and a strike. Yeah, and the... Infielders Austin at second and Garcia at short. They're playing pretty straight away. 
for Peyton Holt. So Stovall can get a really good secondary lead. He can bounce off that base and yeah, score easily on a base hit. Hitters count for Holt. That's a strike called. That was a late call by Danny Cricks. Holt thought he had ball four. Instead, uh, the count has gone full. Holt thought that ball was inside. It's a really nice job by Hernandez. I think he might have stolen right there. Here comes the payoff pitch. And that's outside. That's ball four. So he gets the walk after all that. And it'll bring up Ben McLaughlin. Brett, there is a little bit of breeze blowing out to right center field. So anything in the air that way is really carried during batting practice today. There's all glory. You know, it's nice in the sunshine, a little bit cool in the shade, and a bit of a breeze as well. Nice pick by Hernandez. We've been reasonably lucky weather-wise. I mean, it could be a little bit nicer. I'd always advocate for warmer temperatures. <laughs> 97 is your, your low temperature. Boy, that'd be right? ideal. That'd be perfect. But sunny and dry. Boy, Dallas, that area has been hammered with some weather, and you, know, you start to see some other games affected around the country this past week and this weekend. Not here. McLaughlin would like to affect this game with a base hit. 15 runs batted in, but he went 0 for 4 last night, which was a rare 0 for, for Benny Barrels. And that's at the bell for a called strike. You can see a little nod by McLaughlin. He knew that pitch was in the zone. Again, that the high strike is the area of focus for these SEC umpires. And I like it. I think it's good for the game. At times, you might see a pitch, and, and we're kind of reflecting back on muscle memory where you're like, well, that looks up, but we had the benefit of the zone, and more often than not, it's at that belt, it's in that box, and that should be a pitch that the hitters should enjoy being called a strike. They'd rather have that one called a strike than one two balls below the kneecaps. Yeah, I think so. You can, as long as it's over the plate, you, you've got a shot to make some pretty hard contact. Two on, two out, two balls, two strikes. Deuces wild for Ben McLaughlin. And he nearly took out a couple of Tigers. My goodness, he may have. That is a dangerous situation. I hope everybody's okay. Man. There was just a couple of Tigers that went flying down off that railing. Did I, it hit the screen? Now, years ago, Brett, there wasn't that netting. Well, you're right. The ball did kick away, and I yeah. hope it hit off the railing or rather than an individual. There's a chopper towards Garcia. Had him played perfectly, and he wins the foot raise to second in front of Peyton Holt for the. But somebody didn't really get hurt. D.H. Thomas Curry in to face Brady Tiger. Mizzou went down in order in the first. Tigers had a game this year where they scored 14 runs in the first inning with 17 men batted against Northern Kentucky. <laughs> I don't know how many 14 run first innings I've seen, but right now the Tigers would take a run. 10 innings into the series without a runner even to third base. Yeah, that was, that was really tough. And again, you, you feel like Missouri's going to put some good quality at bats together. Kind of not if, but when those bats are going to start waking up. But when you go against Hagen Smith, that's a tough road to hoe. I think the challenge for any team, and it may be this way for a while, you know, Hagen Smith is a tall task on a Friday. It doesn't get a lot easier with Brady Tiger the next day. Different stuff, but also extremely effective and successful. Well, you just talked about that breaking ball, and the spin rate is just off the chart. And it's one of those pitches, again, out of the hand you give up on. Although there's a free base runner, and this is a combination worth watching today. The Tigers have been hit a ton this year, 37. And Brady has actually hit more guys than he's walked this year. He's hit eight. That breaking ball just didn't bite on this one. If you're going to get hit by a pitch, and if you're Curry, you say, I'll, I'll take that one. It was 73 miles an hour. It felt like a pillow hitting you. Feels like some of his HBPs have been that type of situation where the hitter just can't help but just take his base. And this is Beeman, who's going to pop up a bunt. Just about, but no, oh, it's going to land down below. It's hard to get a foul ball on those first rows. Just below the roof, under the net. 
Photographers trying to find it like an Easter egg hunt. We still don't know where it's at. Got to get a kid that has some flexibility to get down there. There we seat. go. There you go. Beeman has three homers this year. And both last week, Troy, he had a two homer game and a two assist a game. Yeah, the two assist a game, I think, as an outfielder is, is more pleasing than, than even the two home runs. O2 to Beeman. Strike three called outside corner. Third strikeout for Brady Tiger. 13th by a Razorback starter this weekend. Tiger just painted the black on the outside. Home plate umpire Danny Cricks liked that one. And really good job by Parker Rowland sticking that, that catch right there. Third baseman Justin Colon in. 0 for 3 a night ago. Arkansas picked off a Tiger base runner, and it was Lovich by Hagen Smith early. I think little or older brother Ross had some fun with little brother <laughs> yeah. Jackson for getting he's, picked off. He's like, how did that happen? He said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, you know they're going to pick. You know, the one thing I found out about with kids playing baseball, you know, sometimes you're communicating with them when they're young, and you're like, how did that happen? When they give you that look, and they're like, I don't know, is when you just stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, okay. All right. Anything I got you. else I say is not even going to be heard. How'd you miss that pitch? I don't know. And you're like, all right, I think we're done. Curry, the DH over at first base, he's yet to attempt to steal, but Tigert's giving him a lot of attention over there. He's got a pretty good lead, but I think it's almost kind of like one of those one way leads. Long pause before the pitch to Cologne. That one almost got him on that back shoulder as well. Tigers wearing those neon yellow jerseys here this afternoon. Almost got his bat. Sure did. Off and running was Curry. And that one popped up towards Peyton Stovall fighting the sunshine. He'll make the catch. You're not getting a lot of help today from the clouds, bright sunshine, and a little bit of breeze, so it's kind of a deadly combination on pop-ups, but Peyton made the play. You can see that ball just kept floating out toward the outfield, and you think it's going to land in one spot, and it just keeps carrying. Matt Garcia, the shortstop in. Missed a couple of weeks due to injury. I think he had a, a wrist problem. Takes a strike over the inside edge. He went 0 for 3 yesterday in game one of the series. Hey, you feel, really feel like Garcia is going to start heating up at the plate. Watch him during BP. He had some really nice swings. It's been quite a journey for Garcia. An Orlando native, grew up in Puerto Rico. Started at Bethune-Cookman, went to Juco at Chipola, came back to Bethune, then came to Mizzou. It's the new era of college baseball. <laughs> he never unpacked his bags. <laughs> two outs and two strikes. Off the fist, rolled foul, first base sign. Well, it really looks like that fastball command of Brady Tiger is much better this game than his last start. And I think that makes him that much more effective when he can spot up that fastball. Remember, he had four scoreless, but the last batter he faced hit a ground ball that hit the runner with the bases loaded. Had right. it not hit the runner, two would have scored. Lifted in the air to left center. The outfielders were playing very deep, but Lovich will get there to make the catch to end the inning. Leadoff hit batter. The Tiger doesn't score. Mizzou is yet to have a runner reach third base. And, uh, Got a few thoughts on that coming back next inning when it comes to a pitching standpoint. And Arkansas just trying to get this offense rolling. It feels like they're getting a little bit closer every week. And Jason Jones getting his opportunity today with three homers on the year. Yeah, DBH still kind of tinkering with that lineup just a bit, trying to figure out who is going to solidify those couple outfield positions as well as third base. Pimentel misses down and out. 3 0. A 
there's if there's ever a guy with green light would be Jason Jones with the wind blowing out. You don't think he's going to get it. Well, he would have loved to have a crack at that one. Jones with a big swing, hits it in the air, down the line and right. Beeman right on the chalk, now into foul territory, makes the catch. To retire Jones with a first down. Meanwhile, for Mizzou, Carrick Jackson, his first year, his dream job back at Missouri. Yesterday was the first time in the history of the SEC there was an African-American head coach. And a man may be ready for this opportunity. Was at Memphis last year. Just had a tremendous conversation with him this week, trying to change the culture, use the phrase at times, Troy, trying to grow these guys up. As Nolan Sousa bats. Of course, all Sousa did yesterday was hit a pair of home runs in his first SEC game. Yeah, that was pretty impressive by Nolan Sousa. And you're right, uh, you know, Coach Jackson was just amazing in that interview. Uh, really talked about you know, hey, you wanna, he, he cares about the players first, and then baseball is secondary. Want to grow these, yeah, grow them up into be men. Yeah, transition and culture, and he's talked a lot about that. Very adamant about what is important, being on time. Even dropped on us, life doesn't care about how good you are. <laughs> you know? He's tried to kind of redefine, I think, a little bit about how they see success. Obviously, we do it in wins and losses, but there are other ways, too, when you're building a program that are steps forward. Sousa fouls one back. It was maybe the last thing to come, seeing him drill balls to left center. And I listened to his interview on the radio last night, post game, and Bubba asked him the same thing. You know, the ability to turn on pitches, and my goodness, did he ever. He's 10 for his last 20 with nine runs driven in in his last eight games. Here's a payoff, and he'll take that one off his back. And another base runner. And if you're going to get hit, that's a little bit easier than the one that Peyton Stovall took. But another free base runner for the Hogs. And yesterday, it really cost Missouri. And see if they can get themselves out of this jam as well. Well, Ross Lovich enjoyed his first game against his brother and against his former team. His three-run homer in the third inning turned a 2-0 Arkansas lead to 5 nothing. And as DVH pointed out after the game, you give his pitching staff a three-run shot and a five-run lead, it starts to feel like a huge advantage Arkansas in the game. Like, just try and catch us now. Yeah, it, it's really tough. Again, you had Hagen Smith coming out through awesome, and then Christian Fouch came in, looked impressive, and then Cooper Dossett kind of polished things off. So the pitching staff for Arkansas was spot on last night. Lovich fouls one right back to the screen. Younger brother Eli, who's also an Arkansas commit, I think he had a game last night, so he's expected to be here tomorrow. The rest of the family members have been here. They had the split jerseys, Arkansas on one side, Mizzou on another, a Tiger logo, a Hog logo. Probably family members on both pass lists if they had to kind of allocate it differently. Yeah, poor Eli. I think he got forgotten about yesterday. I think it's so like, too. We're gonna we're gonna go watch the <laughs> SEC opener. I'm not sure if there was any family member there watching him at his high school game, but there's the Lovich brothers. Jackson off to a really good start his second season. They say Eli might be the best. Arkansas would love that to be the case. If he is, that's a pretty talented kid because both Ross and Jackson can hold their weight with anyone. It's a little unusual of the first base away that Jackson Lovich is holding the runner on over there. You don't suppose brother would hit a line drive right at him, would you? <laughs> might, might wake him up over there a little <laughs> bit. When you're playing first base and you got a lefty 
Uh, it, just, it just feels like they're standing on top of you. Seem really off that first base. Souza with a deep lead. And going, going back into the base in that back corner. Chopper back to the mound. And out at second, back to first. Double play, a 1-6-3 DP ends the second. A strike. How about a 2,000 OPS? It's just, it's absurd. Jadier Hernandez will lead off the third inning against Tiger. That was outside for a ball. Remember when Hagen had his big numbers yesterday, I was talking about the fact he is pretty much tied with Luke Holman in a lot of categories. As good as Hagen has been, Holman equally as good. Maybe not so yesterday. He allowed 10 hits, five runs, only two earned in four and two-thirds innings as LSU lost. Tennessee's won 17 straight games. How about Vandy run ruling Auburn in eight, 11 to one? Auburn had the first run of the game, and then the last 11 went to the uh, Doors. Yeah, that's an Auburn team that's ranked in the top 25. They're, they're no slouch, but the Doors just clubbed them. But it, and Luke Holman, he was a transfer from Alabama, right? That's right. That was a huge get for LSU. There's no doubt about that. Jay Johnson told me earlier this year he put the same effort into Holman as he did Skeens. <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> yeah, of effort. Well, yeah, that's a lot. Two balls, two strikes to Hernandez. Had one of the four hits for Mizzou yesterday. Again, his mother cousins with the famous catching Molina brothers. Benji, Yachty, Jose, wave it a miss. At the bottom falling out of that breaking ball by Brady Tiger. Okay, that's the one that starts about waist high, and it looks like a strike, and then it just disappears out of the zone. And see Parker Rowland barely catches that ball but before it hits the dirt. You know, Arkansas's pitchers continue to put up amazing numbers. As Caden Peer will bat the nine-hole hitter. Troy, there was a nice article done on Hogbeat this week, and they just went back and looked at some of the past College World Series teams, even last year. The top three teams nationally in earned run average, Wake, Tennessee, Virginia, all made it to Omaha. And then Oral Roberts, the team we saw this week, they were actually seventh. So maybe it shouldn't right. have been a surprise that they were one of the eight teams at the College World Series. And even LSU, you don't hear their name in there, but of course they had Paul Skeens. As Pierre will pop one up, a play for Roland. No problem, two outs. An Arkansas starter as well. This is a formidable weekend trio. Yeah, those guys, that's about as good as it gets in the in the country. Wake Forest has got a great lineup. A&M's got some brilliant starters. But, boy, that's, that's tough when you see those guys penciled in near the opponent. Back to the top of the lineup, Brock Daniels. I think you go back the last 15 years, nine of the 14 national champions have finished in the top 20, 25 in the country in team run run average. And Arkansas, I think they came in third. Of course, one of the, the teams ahead of them was A&M, who, who got hit around a little bit last night. And who knows what the conference will look like for the Aggies. But that man's got himself a good staff. And, Troy, there's even a couple of guys getting closer to coming back. Yeah, there's some there's some big arms. Ben Bybee returning from a season to go. And, and a, a freshman, Hunter Dietz, is going to start throwing just a little bit more, and you might see him in about a week or two. And he goes 6'6", 230. Left-hander with some electric stuff. These last couple of years, it's felt like Arkansas has lost a key arm early. Of course, Wiggins or Paulette, and you, you lose somebody like Dylan Carter. This year, it'd be nice to get a few guys back. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a different change of pace for Arkansas, for sure. Brady Tiger misses down and in to Daniels. Tiger trying to put forth three scoreless innings. I think Roland forgot the pitch count. There he goes. He's got it on that. Shin guard, he's inputting a lot of data. Payoff pitch, breaking ball, strike three. Five Ks through three innings for Brady. Lefty-lefty matchup. And that one carries off the plate. See if Stovall can have a really tight strike zone right here. You want to split that zone in half and pick whichever half you want, but if it's in the other half, just take it. 
Good pitch, front door breaking ball. Nice job by Pimentel not giving up and giving in on a 2-0 pitch. Wave and a miss. That 88 felt a little bit firmer. Kind of got that cross body action does Pimentel, so that pitch kind of starts behind those left-handed batters. Fouled back and out of play. Haven't seen a lot of shifting by the Tigers. They've been deep in their outfield. Came up under the chin of Stovall for ball three. That was a changeup that just got away from Pimentel. Only 77 miles an hour, so definitely wasn't throwing at him. We've had a handful of HBPs on some pitches that have just uh, not quite had the snapper break. There's a bounce at a first. Lovich has got it. He'll win the race, and there's two outs. Two gone for Aloy. We got our Hawaiian battle again. Did you ever think we'd be talking about this many Hawaiians, a Hawaiian double play combination, and pitchers and hitters and whatnot? And no, not at all. It's uh, I tell you what, there is a lot of talent over there, and I had the pleasure to go over and play in Hawaii my sophomore year, so that was pretty cool. Bahiva struck out looking his only time in. Never gets cheated on that swing. He came in as the guy we were talking about more so than Nolan Souza, but Souza's had this incredible stretch. There's a big chopper to second for Austin. He's got it. A couple of feet back on the outfield grass. He'll throw out Aloy to end the inning. So the Razorbacks go in order. Three scoreless so far today from Bomb Walker. And today, just tell me your thoughts on walking around Bomb Walker and soaking this up. This has actually been an incredible trip because there is a there is a person and faculty here that I found out about last year during a regional when I was watching. His name's Dan Trump and he works you know for, under Hunter Urchek. So he gave me the full rundown of what's happening here with Arkansas baseball, and I was absolutely blown away with the with the facility here, with the development center, and then being here with the weather and everything. But. Last year, like you said, Grambling State's a different animal. That was that was, <laughs> that was a, right. That was I about your feet wet. That was 50 degrees, and there were still <laughs> 9,000 fans in the seats. But here, you've got the SEC opening weekend, and after calling some of those college classic games down in Minute Maid Park, which you were doing as well, you kind of get a feel for what's about to happen. But to be here and be in the midst of it, that nothing compares personally. Having grown up in the Pac-12 or Pac-10 you know, uh, conference, nothing compares to what the SEC brings. It, this is a gauntlet like I've never seen. You know, it's something else is Austin singles, and you got a chance to go in the development center the other yeah. day. I mean, oh it's hard my. not to be blown away, right? It, it really is. And I had an anticipation because my brother Greg played here in 1999 and 2000, and he's actually toured a bit of the facility and been around a little bit. But until you get your eyes on it and understand what Coach Van Horn has done here, not just to have the, the ability to build something like that, but to actually make it baseball functional. I mean, this is a place where I can't imagine any of these players want to leave. You know, between the nutrition, between the weight room, the, right. the facility as far as the training room, I can't imagine having the ability to have a trainer or a strength conditioning coordinator at my fingertips and at have a facility time. like that all day long. It would be unbelievable. You know, Troy, we were talking about Hunter Bell, the strength and conditioning coach, earlier today and how these guys come in, they look like pencils, they look like 18-year-olds. Two and a half years <laughs> later, they look like, you know, future big leaguers with their body frame. And, and not even that long, I think. They have really – putting on some muscle and he is an, an elite strength coach but yeah you're right even during COVID some of the guys said I literally don't even have to leave I just go home to go to sleep mm -hmm. <laughs> well and how about uh, you know in talking to the coaches over there you know I got to uh, meet uh, you know, Ken Thompson I believe yeah, Nate, yeah, coach. Yep. Thompson yeah um, he was talking about the fact that even with you know you get some crazy weather up here like we do down in Houston you're not going to miss a beat being able to get your work in whether it's at the batting tunnels here at the development center or you go across the street to that facility over there so that's the other thing and I think now with the you know the the, the major the minor league baseball's uh situation being shrunk yep you know every team has eliminated so many teams and so many opportunities that why wouldn't you make a choice to come to a place like Arkansas and get top of the line training get top of the line strength 
There's a liner there to go. short. Going to be an easy double play as Aloy flips back to first to double off Austin. And then be able to just get your work in and develop the technology that they have in the tunnels in there crazy, for pitchers is, is big league level type technology. And these guys are going to be better. And how else do you get a guy from Hawaii or a couple of guys from Hawaii to come to Arkansas? First of all, you tell them that it's really nice in February and March and you lie to them. But once they get here, yeah. they get into it. But I I'm with you. And, uh, you know, I went over and talked to the Missouri catcher, J.D. Hernandez, before the game. His mom's cousins are the Molina brothers, Yadi, Benji, oh, wow. Jose. And, uh, you know, so he's been around it a lot, as have you. And he told me, he goes, I can't believe this place. He goes, yeah. and I said, you know, there are conference games where there's more people. And he goes, how? <laughs> I'm like, well, there's an empty seat here, about and there's one there. There won't be for LSU when mm -hmm. they come in in a few weeks. Yeah, there, it's actually that I'm, I'm tempted to come up because a couple of our games against uh, that opening weekend got picked up Friday, Saturday. Oh, that's right. So it's it, the temptation <laughs> to fly into Bentonville real quick to catch some of that action would be great. You're one of the few that spring breaks away from spring training, and I get it. I appreciate it. More <laughs> baseball for you, but exactly. uh, your rare break between Astros spring training and regular season games, which will start soon enough. No, but I love the atmosphere. I mean, it's amazing that, you know, you can say that a baseball team in collegiate baseball is getting this much attention. You know, even some of our viewership last year for some of the conference games, Tennessee, there was 80, 90,000 people tuning in over no the course kidding. of – a game which is a little bit unlike the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, the, you know, the ongoing theory is that D1 baseball like this caliber, you know, in some of those Power Five conferences is comparable to Double A, if not better, with some of these some of these players. And having hung around the Astros long enough and understanding how they draft and develop players and now talking to the current GM of the Astros, Dana Brown, but he might have gotten them right there, I do too. is that the fact that they're trying to develop these players and get them to the big leagues as quickly as possible, and why not have a, a young man who's been working out here at this facility, get him, sign him, at, draft him at 21, and just push him through the system and get him to produce at the big league level. It's not They're not that far away playing here. I'd yeah, like to get right. you together with Coach Hobbs. He's a Californian <laughs> guy, and he's amazing. You know, Booney <laughs> just about took him to the Yankees a few oh, wow. years ago. And uh, his ability to kind of work through the technology, you have to have somebody that yeah. can understand it and, and relay it. But speaking of that and speaking of the Astros, how much would you like to take Hagen Smith back? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I t I, so we so everything I saw was, you know, on video and what we saw up in Arlington when he struck out 17. And then to be able to watch him in person in that first inning, actually watch the ball the way it comes out of his hand, the ball absolutely jumps out of the hand. And then watching some of those sliders and, you know, no offense to anybody <laughs> who has a kid – playing for the University of Missouri. <laughs> yeah, no but offense, Tigers. <laughs> some of those swings that I saw kind of oh, explained feeble. the fact that how good the swing or how good the pitching was. But, yeah, I think that uh, the more we watch Hagen Smith, the more he might be that 1-1 coming out of college. Well, he could be close. And you think about this as uh, Beeman bats, five starts, 50 strikeouts, and mm. one of his start went one inning. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, my brother, 30, my brother was 35 degrees. <laughs> so you got to give him a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, he, for that. He's at, we actually give him credit for being smarter than <laughs> maybe we think he <laughs> exactly. is because he got out of that start. That's just outside. I think Parker Rowland wanted strike three, but a little bit out. I like the kind of the the mix-up, you know, I mean, or the change-up in putting Tigard out there in between. Hagen Smith and who they got going on Sunday because he's a little more finesse, work the edges. Tell you what, he's going to make a lot spin. of money too. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch from Tigert is a check swing. So the count has gone full now to Beeman. Yeah, I would imagine you don't see too many breaking balls like that throughout Division I. <laughs> spin rates <laughs> off the charts. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it's, it's got a parachute when it comes in, doesn't it? Yeah, it kind of hits the brakes and just breaks down out of the zone. Curry will be off and running on the payoff pitch. Tiger going for strikeout number six, and he will issue back-to-back -back walk. So after that line-out double play, he's walk Curry and Beeman. Tigers have yet to get a runner to third base in this series, but they're getting a little bit closer. Yeah, that <laughs> seems like it's Brady Tiger's only Achilles heel so far this season is just scuffling just a bit with that command, but the, the stuff is definitely next level. Hey, you got your two daughters with you, but there's also another daughter yeah. down working. I know. As the yeah. uh, the Diamond Girl, correct? Have I got the right terminology? Diamond right? Doll. Diamond, Diamond Doll. Doll. Yeah. And Mia was up here with us last year in the booth when you and your wife Corey stopped by. Yep. We got another Blum. 
she's going to be so mad that I didn't text her and tell her that she's going to be on TV. But well, yeah, she knew to smile. She, she knew the camera she does. was on it. Yeah, she, 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 she was super excited. Uh, she didn't go into the sorority type situation last year. She kind of was looking for something to do around the game, and uh, she, she understood that Arkansas baseball is pretty good and the games are fun to watch. And obviously the fan interaction that she gets being a Diamond Doll kind of encouraged her to go out there. So I think it's awesome that she's able to put herself out there. All right. There was a little bit of a situation last night. The ball that, ricocheted in. Yeah, right? ricocheted in, and fortunately I think she told she's told the girl, hey, you pick it up. I'm not touching it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> she gets a pretty good seat too for the game. That's that's, that's not another, bad. That's actually you're, a really good point. <laughs> you're on the field. Yes. Behind a screen, which was good. Yeah, you're getting to see like very good baseball up close and personal. You know, sometimes you might say, "I wonder how much baseball those young ladies know." Does she ever drop? Well, you know, my dad played X number of years in the big leagues. Does she ever? incorporate that in just to kind of get a one upsmanship over someone I'm, else? I'm sure if she gets cornered, <laughs> that that might be the opportunity to throw that out there. Well, you know. <laughs> I know but, what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's what's kind of cool about, you know, the girls being around the game and, uh, you know, having moved to Houston and having the job that I have. They go to plenty of baseball. They have somebody they can ask the question of. And they do know the game pretty well. That's another walk. So, Tiger, well, actually, it's ball three. Thought the scoreboard might have been off, but that's ball three. So now the fans will be all over Justin Cologne. And uh, it'll get this crowd engaged just a bit. Every once in a while, they need some confrontation. They need something. Yeah. Well, I thought there'd already be that <laughs> initially with having Missouri in here. <laughs> Nothing like starting with your rival right out of the chute in the SEC. But, yeah, there's four ba four balls to get a walk here in the <laughs> Even that in, hasn't even changed, in, even in the college even game. Even D1, yeah. Maybe sometimes it feels like we need five in the college <laughs> game rather than three. Cologne flew out to center as only time in. Fouls that one back. So now we've gone full, and the runners will be able to take off on the payoff. And the pitch count leaking a bit north from Tiger at uh, 63. I have a feeling Brady's going to drop a breaking ball right here. It seems like the fastball's lost him just a bit. Curry at second, beam it at first, ready to go. Here's the pitch, and it's fouled back. Came with a fastball and got it in on the hands. Well, now you got a good time to throw that breaking yeah, ball. Sped him up with two pitches. Now you slow up. things down. Yeah. The thing for Target is you got to start that one up over their head because it drops so much. Right. Get it in the zone. Yeah, when you're spinning at 27, 28 <laughs> on your spin rate. Former closer turn starter Tiger trying to get out of this fourth inning, keep this game scoreless. There's the breaking ball, and he didn't quite get the snap. And, you know, he came in having walked seven guys all year in 20 innings. He's walked three in a row. Now Matt Hobbs will make a visit to the mound, and we'll talk more about Coach Hobbs later on. But, of course, the pitching coach for Missouri would coach. But now we'll see if Brady can find a way to retire Matt Garcia. So... Kind of lost that uh, control and the command of that breaking pitch. So now trying to find it again with a fastball. Now this is where you got to get in the zone and trust that defense behind you to track it down or make that play on the ground. Soft little dribbler. That's a foul ball. Might have hit the foot of Garcia on its way to McLaughlin. Arkansas was hoping for the quick out, but a foul ball instead. These Mizzou uniforms look a little bit like the old Pirates, don't they? Oof. Yeah. Well, he got the inside of that leg. I thought Missouri stole that look from the ushers here at <laughs> Baum Walker Stadium. <laughs> I can say things you guys can't. They can help you find your seat in addition to <laughs> playing some baseball. One ball, two strikes the count. There they are. Hey. He's going to bat. Yeah, seriously. What ninth he, in the lineup for the Tigers. Pinch hit in the ninth. <laughs> This crowd might erupt if Tiger gets the there K, and he just missed. Man, well, they erupted all tour. right. I tell you what, TrackMan has changed the college strike zone in addition to the big list. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's actually a good thing too. But you really wish that it would kind of translate behind the plate because that was an excellent pitch in a key situation. And there's a liner caught by Alloy. How about that positioning to end the inning? In the game, talking some ball as Diggs steps in, homered yesterday. Takes one down from the lefty for ball one. 
Yes, Ball was jumping yeah. yesterday, wasn't Yesterday it? was launch mode. And, I mean, not cheapies <laughs> either. You know, that first one that uh, Sousa hit, an absolute laser out, and then everybody tried to, you know, test the integrity of that <laughs> development center out there. It was unreal. Got to reinforce that roof, don't they? <laughs> Honestly, or you got to put somebody up there to shag because some of those bombs were going well up on top of that roof. It is amazing how the college game has changed over the last decade, more resembling yep. what you see at the big league level. It's hard against SEC pitchers to string together mm -hmm. six or seven inch. You need base runners, and you need somebody who can launch. Yeah, I completely agree with you, and it's kind of funny you say that because I was thinking about that last night. When I when I started my broadcast career, it was part-time with the Astros, part-time with the Pac-12 networks. It'll be a play here for Cologne. Never a certainty about a pop-up, but he'll make the catch. True, especially on days like this without a cloud in the sky. <laughs> but it was interesting to watch. You know, there were you, know, you had your five-hole hitter was bunting for the six and seven guys to, to score the runner on a base hit, possibly. But like you said, Brett, now you've got guys in the top of your lineup. You can have a little more structured lineup where you say, get on base. we got a thumper in the middle that might drive the ball out. Or if he gets on base, then we'll just string together some hits. But the, what I like about Arkansas, and you guys have seen this longer than I have, is what I'm witnessing is these are great at bats. I mean, they ramp up pinch counts against these starters until they find a way to break through and get mistakes up out of the plate. And when they do get those mistakes, they're not missing any of them. Kind of comes back to understanding the strike zone with track man, doesn't it? 100%. And that goes to the technology and the development that they have here at Arkansas is that you can understand, you know, when you're in a sim game, you can look at the screen and say, okay, I felt like that was a ball, was it? And then, you, you know, you can reinforce that positive thought and then continue to build that idea of what the strike zone is. And then you can pick your spots, pick your pitches. But it was fun to watch them last night kind of feel their way through the first time through the order. And then they went to smashing that second time through the order because they can anticipate a little bit more. You saw a guy like Yuli Gurriel come into the Astros as a free mm. swinger, a guy who didn't take many walks. And then there was this comprehension of you've got to learn the strike zone. You've got to be able to understand what to swing at, what to take. And, you know, a couple of years later, guys winning a batting title as Holt will K here for the second out in the fourth inning. And it's hard for a free swinger to kind of adapt yeah. and learn, but these kids are learning it at an earlier age before they can get to the minors. Yeah, I think, like all of us, we're watching big league games because this is where these guys want to be is in the show. How do I do that? Pitching side, you got to prove you got, you're durable enough to pitch and show up every, you know, five days. On the offensive side, you've got to be able to handle that strike zone because you're watching guys like Alex Bregman, Kyle Tucker, at least at our, you know, on a daily basis for us, where they really control that strike zone. Shoot, y Jordan Alvarez, he's a six foot five Adonis, and every time he makes contact, it's 112 off the bat. But now that he has an idea of what the strike zone is, it forces the pitchers to make better pitches, and if they don't, they're going to take advantage of some of those mistakes. But I'm impressed with young hitters. Because you know as well as I do, having played the game, you get to a 2-0, 3-1. I'm swinging at the next pitch no matter where this thing is, and I'm going to try and hit it 900 feet. These guys, are they're going, if it's not in my if it's That's not right. my happy spot, I'm going to take the walk and I'm going to go to first base and let my buddy behind me pick me up. Yeah, I think that's just the, the confidence in the whole lineup yeah. is, you know, hey, there's guys behind me that can get it done. But just, you know, Jeff talking about, you know, the, the facilities here and how – uh, the level that, that SEC is as far as quality. Think about you know just the percentage of guys in the big leagues that were college players. Mm -hmm. You know it's 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 almost getting what pushing fifty percent or just a tick below that. I would imagine that number is going to continue to grow. I think so. Yeah, because you're talking again about how quickly can I get to the big leagues, and at a 21 year old or a 20 year old that comes out of a collegiate system like an SEC school, specifically Arkansas, you've already been exposed to the data, the analytics, the the work ethic to be able to go out there and produce and like you guys are talking about the idea of what the strike zone is so they'll speed up into the big leagues quicker. McLaughlin a soft line out hey nothing has come across through four innings we'll keep Arkansas blanked uh, Missouri yesterday and Brady Tiger back to work and you know college baseball's never been older still trying to get through the college COVID years and uh, I, I don't know how many true upsets there are or just more parity as uh, Hernandez waves and misses to begin this fifth inning. But the talent level, Jeff, as we've been talking about off and on, I think has never been at a better level. I'm curious, you know, you yeah. guys combined for three College World Series in this booth. You played one in Cal, and two yeah, in got a third Arkansas. Of that. Yeah, you've only got there, but you did have a you did have some World Series. <laughs> <laughs> you got a, He's you got, got me trumped uh, by that. <laughs> you got a handful of rings for a variety of purposes. That doesn't hurt. I'm curious what the velocity was like you would face on the weekends. You know, with some of the pitchers, if maybe you'd see a handful of 92s, yeah. 93s, or when once you got into the bullpen, if it was 88, 89. 
No, it, it was sinker slider back in the day. And I know that, uh, you know, I remember vividly my freshman year going into Sunken Diamond at Stanford. I played at Cal. And, you know, outside of being, you know, the hyped up uh, idea of that rivalry is there was a guy on the mound just pumping heaters at the top of the zone at 94, 95 <laughs> miles an hour, and it was Rick Helling. Yeah. You know, and he had a pretty extensive uh, big league career as a pitcher, but that was the first time I've actually seen a four-seam fastball that absolutely <laughs> destroyed me <laughs> at 18. And, you know, I just started switch hitting, and he threw one that I swear ricocheted off my top <laughs> – thumb knuckle and landed about four <laughs> feet behind him for a base hit and got i mean i'm standing there trying to play it off like man that was a rocket to center right guys and I'm like, i could just feel my entire heartbeat in my left hand but that was kind of that indu- introduction to uh you know the d1 level but there weren't too many like you know the saturday guy would be 90 to 92 and then you face the sunday guy that would be you know lefty flipping curveballs right. in there at, you know 73 miles an hour so it, but it was kind of cool to see, like, the speed of it and then having to make the adjustment as a hitter throughout the weekend. But, you know, guys coming into close weren't throwing 100 miles an hour. Well, yesterday, Fouch was throwing 97 with a splitty. That we, thing. We didn't see Gackle, by the way, was throwing 98. D2, they, they tell us, is going to be, you know, a big leaguer at some points trying to get back. He, he's an 18-year-old kid that we haven't seen yet. So, you know, these are 18-year-old kids mm-hmm. doing that. And well, you know, oh yeah, by the way, Dietz is 6'6", 230, so it's just... <laughs> just coming downhill, yeah, yeah. creating an just, angle just you can't ridiculous. get to. Yeah, it, well, I, I just don't... I mean, you guys have... I know, Brett, you've called a lot of perfect game and seen a lot of the, the you know, b- below amateur down in uh, high school and coming up. Um, you know, this era of radar guns, it began with the radar gun. Now you've got the spin numbers. Now you've got all the analytics that go with it. And I feel like the idea of max effort is great, but it creates the, the a, a different torque on that elbow. There's no and doubt. It, there yeah. was a great article in The Athletic talking about, you know, is it the velocity? Is it uh, the spin? But I think it's, you know, they kind of came to the conclusion it's a combination of how hard they grip that baseball and how hard they have the arm going through. The delivery is what kind of creates that excessive, you know, pressure on that elbow. But, no, d- nobody was max effort. I grew up in the era of Greg Maddox where it was, you know, paint the corners, you know, keep them off balance. But now everybody's just – they can hurl it at, you know, 100 miles an hour. Brock Daniels, who's been a uh, strikeout victim twice, will take his HBP. Now, I've got that article <laughs> right in front of me. I yeah. wait to talk to Coach Hobbs about it. He's had the flu and other uh, things that have kept me from him, but I'm with you. And, you know, you struck out twice, though. You'll take that every day of the oh, week man. if you're Brock Daniels. I tell you what, you could hit me with 100 miles an hour on an 0-2 <laughs> count after two strikeouts, and I'd be like, man, that felt great. <laughs> Who was the guy in the big leagues that terrorized you the most? Kevin Brown. Well, he was nasty, oh, wasn't yeah. he? Kevin Brown, it, well, he was angry, too. I don't know what. Crap, I, and, yeah. He was just grumpy, <laughs> man. But he also, he would go out there in, you know, he would go out there in Altuve's jersey, and he's six four, you know, two hundred and fifty pounds ripped out of his mind. It looked like he was going to explode out of his shirt. <laughs> and I came to the plate, and I felt like he was picking on me half the time because he'd throw ninety three mile on our split fingers. It would dive into the zone for strikes, and I was like, I had, I did not have an answer. He wanted for to him. hurt your feelings. He every time I stepped in, <laughs> I think I was two for twenty five <laughs> off that guy. I'd rather face Randy Johnson than Kevin Brown. Ooh. Yeah, there's some good ones back in the day. <laughs> That's why you switch hit, uh, right? So you didn't have oh, to. Oh, 100%. Yeah, just turn around and face those guys. You know, and, and getting back to, you know, collegiate baseball, that, that's a great – it's a great place to kind of explore who you're going to be as a, as a player. And that's why, you know, I encourage – I know that, get, you know, the money and getting to the big leagues and playing professionally, there's a certain appeal to that. But if you have some development to be able to make at 18 years old and you can go into a collegiate level and test yourself like I did at trying to switch hit at 18 years old, that translated into a big league career because if I didn't know how to hit left-handed or for, or for both sides of the plate eventually, I probably wouldn't have had the career. I would have gotten opportunities, but the hitting left-handed just opened up a whole other realm of, of opportunities for me. No, I bet it did. Playing multiple positions on the infield or whatnot, being able to switch hit certainly helped mm-hmm. make a long career nice. as Austin waves and misses. Then we translated him, Troy, into the TV booth, so we threw him to the other side of the baseball <laughs> yeah, that's, spectrum that's, right there. That's right. <laughs> I hit so well, and I feel so well up here in the booth, Jeff. And I don't know about you, but it's uh, the anticipation so much better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tiger will miss downstairs, so he has put on a couple of two-out base runners again this inning for Jackson Lovich. VH wants to uh, limit that as best he can and wait for this offense to get it going. 
Well, I think that's probably why Van Horn's going to a guy like McIntyre right here because he is going to keep throw strikes. Because defensively, you get a little bit on your heels when a guy's not being able to find the strike zone. So these guys will probably be on their toes waiting for a ball right here. And Lovich had some quality at bats yesterday against Hagen. He takes that fastball down and out for ball one. Jeff McIntyre is kind of one of those unusual guys that he almost likes to throw twice on a weekend. <laughs> so it doesn't, you don't get those very often. There you go. No, that's that you have to, you know, guys are going to have that, that uh, mentality ingrained in them, but you can also develop that too. Because if they do enjoy pitching and they can make it out for two times on a weekend, that speaks volumes about their ability. About back to the screen. And you know this, in the big leagues, we watched the event at Minute Maid where we had 20 pitchers, by the way, in the last yes. game in 11 innings. Congrats. And there was no – and, you know, I'm working with Brian Bogusevic, <laughs> and he's like, where's the three batter minimum? Because you guys get ingrained yeah. in that. Well, the, you know, but the circle of trust here is about eight pitchers, and then it gets down to seven, down to six. That was one of the funniest conversations I had with Jay Johnson <laughs> of the LSU Tigers. He's like, I'm not afraid. Minute inning change, I'm doing it. <laughs> Wave and a miss. There's the cutter. There's Beautiful. the strikeout. We'll keep Jeff for one more half. That hitting speed Feels like that it. the Razorbacks are accustomed to because it felt like there were some mistake fastballs yesterday that they were able to get to and launch. But at the same time, I mean, they're, they've got that pitch count up almost to, what, 68, 70. So you're kind of hoping that you can wait them out and get some mistakes up. But, yeah, I think that slurve has kind of kept them a little bit off balance trying to create an angle to it. Hard hit to third. Scoop by Colon. Pops up. Flips to first in time. One out. So hard. their defense is making plays today. Which they didn't yesterday. No. It's right. i got to tell you my favorite Jeff Blum story. It's hard to kind of narrow it down, right? I mean, because well, there I, are so I, many. I'm comfortable because this one's actually TV friendly. <laughs> okay. That, that's true. This, You're not this one's in the top on. ten, right? Okay. <laughs> No, that's a good point. So uh, I forget what year. Uh, you know, he was an Astro, and we played the Cubs in a series at home. So oh, yeah. um, when the games would go extra innings, we got to the point where they would finally trust us to call the extra innings over our <laughs> Hall of Fame broadcaster who was, you know, he was 80-plus years old, and he kind of liked to have it. Well, so lo and behold, they turn it you to me. Say. Jeff comes up. I think it's right now ball down the right field line. He wins the game in extra innings. He's the hero. I get to call it. So now immediately I'm the bad guy. Right, it's my fault that he got put, the game-winning hit. I put you in that position. You put me in a terrible spot. So we get to the next day, the very next freaking day, same team, extra innings. I'm calling it again. He does it again. Back-to-back -back <laughs> days, walk-off hits, both days I call it, and now I am in the doghouse. I mean, I have to. Uh, you're you're going to be lucky if you get an <laughs> inning. That's right. They're be picking up trash in the parking lot after that. So, oh, man, no doubt. He's going to wrap up all the equipment, the headsets. <laughs> after the second game, he's got a briefcase that's older than me. It's 47 years old. He puts the stuff in the briefcase, closes it up, and he's out the door before Jeff is even back in the dugout. And now I've got the whole post game to myself because, you know, again, my fault that he got the walk-off hits. My partner's down in the uh, dugout, probably ready to interview Jeff yep. for $50. And, uh, and then he says, he goes, he's not there, is he? He's gone. He can tell that he's not there. <laughs> he knows that he's already he, left. The presence is left. <laughs> because he can, he can sense it. And he knows it's my fault, too. And uh, all because of uh, the man to my right. As Sousa waves I and misses. I do what I can to yeah. help out the cause. That, that put me in a bind. I, I apologize for that. <laughs> and you know what's funny? If he, if he would have told me that story when I was playing, I wouldn't have believed him. But having been right. in the booth now for the last 11, 12 years <laughs> and kind of seeing the underbelly of what is actually happening on this level, I now – Sometimes it's not pretty, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, I had no idea. But it's, but it was, it, it's, it's, it's resounding. <laughs> underbelly is a good word, too. Yeah. <laughs> As Lovich bats with the base is empty and two outs. There's a sweeping slider that we talked about earlier, Jeff, that Pimental is really keeping his Razorbacks off balance. No, I completely agree, and I, I, you know, it's kind of interesting to see so many left-handed hitters in this lineup too for uh, Coach Van Horn. But that it, just that little bit of a slurve, you know, everybody talks about the sweepers de these days. But when you can't figure out an angle to a breaking pitch, it That's makes right. it real tough. By the way, Arkansas doesn't have a hit. We've had one hit in this game. Uh oh! oh. Little flare, uh, reverse jinx. <laughs> There's your first hit. Gosh. See, you just jinx everybody, Brad. <laughs> All kinds of That's my problems. fault. I say no, and that's my. Yeah. You know, so you're just credits. talking about how it is your fault. That's right. You're the <laughs> reason we have a hit now. Yeah, Pimentel do. doesn't like it. You're gonna have to uh, go apologize to Pimentel <laughs> for that one. Just a little jam shot right here, and that's when you wish you had a wood bat. That's like a little blooper, the shortstop, right, Jeff? Exactly. Yeah, you were broken the bat, deadened it enough to the shortstop to make the play. 
But there's so much grace in that aluminum bat that you end up with the base hit. Hopefully that kind of opens things up for the Razorbacks. Can I be incredibly biased on this broadcast? Well, you know. Uh, Logan Forsythe sat in for a game for Troy. And, and Logan was dropping a lot of whees, and our producer, they were working on him through three innings. It was a learning process. I haven't even played here. I'm <laughs> dropping whees. But it might be because of three tuitions. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes you a Lee automatically, right? <laughs> Three tuitions. Yeah, I'm waiting for my name across, you know, right under Max Bases loaded landing out there. You'd only have to change one letter in the scoreboard to get my name up there. There you go. There's a high fly in the air to left center, and this should end the inning. And, Will, hey, Jeff, thanks for joining no, us. Thank you for having me on. Always good seeing you guys. I appreciate thanks, the Jeff. hospitality. Appreciate it. Indeed. Jeff Blum, there he goes. Kind of turns things around. I think you do have that feeling. Sometimes you get in these 0 0 games when the wind is howling in. You feel like it's hitter friendly conditions today, but the pitchers have been a little bit better. Curry's been on base twice without an official at bat. Walking a hit by pitch. Cleanup hitter leading off this uh, sixth inning, facing McIntyre on a relief of Tiger. Always enjoy talking with Jeff. You know, you can tell he does this for a living at <laughs> the big league level. <laughs> yeah, he, he's uh, definitely got a personality plus. One one from McIntyre strike called even though Roland didn't catch it cleanly. Sometimes you don't get that borderline strike when the catcher doesn't come up with it. Yeah. Strike three call. So the strikeouts keep racking up. Curry didn't like that one. McIntyre just spotted that one. You can tell Parker Rowland kind of pulled that one back in just a bit. Tiger struck out seven. McIntyre has struck out both of the hitters he's faced. So that is nine one night after the Tiger struck out 12. Remember what we said yesterday, Troy, that Missouri's hitters had struck out more than anybody else in the SEC going up against a pitching staff that records crazy numbers. Yeah, you're right, but again, you, you get a, a bloop and a blast, and that really doesn't matter how many times you three, swing through some pitches. And, but this Arkansas pitching staff has just been top-notch for sure. McIntyre just pumping again. The ability to land that cutter for a called strike rather than just a swig and a miss pitch is one that impresses me. Well, then, then he can go just a little bit more off the plate and get that swing and miss with two strikes. Ground ball to third. Holt will back up, has to twist and fire to first in time to gun down Beeman. Sometimes when these pitchers strike out as many guys as they do and you mix in some walks today, these fielders get a little bit uh, caught watching, so to speak. Yeah, I think so. You got to make sure that you're mentally prepared for a ball to be hit at you. That's a good job by Peyton Holt to come across that that play and, and not make Vahiva Loy make it because it would have been a tough play for a shortstop. This is Cologne. He has walked and popped to second. That was the curveball, wasn't it? 76? Yeah, he took a little something extra off of that one. Yeah, the cutter will be sitting about 82, 83. The cutter's got such break at times it almost looks breaking ball like, but. You don't, you don't see this very – that's yeah. straight over the top. That's 12 to 6 right there by Mack. Two-strike pitch off the corner. Bases empty, two outs in the sixth. McIntyre is trying to cruise through this inning. He's going to do just that. McLaughlin near the pillow makes the catch. That's a quick inning. Tigers go a couple of years ago as a freshman into the postseason. So for one today, facing a new pitcher here from Mizzou. Remember, though, he hit 429 in the postseason, had 21 hits. He was 8 for 16 in Stillwater, went 4 for 8 in Chapel Hill in the Super, and then went 9 for 25 in the College World Series, including a five-hit game. Yeah. That's, that's not too shabby for a freshman. 
Let's tell you about the new pitcher here for the Tigers replacing the left-hander Pimentel. Yeah, Bryce Meyer is the new arm for the Tigers. He'll sit about 90-91 with that fastball, a four-pitch mix guy. He'll throw the, the curve ball that's straight over the top, the true 12-6 to six breaking ball, and throw the slider and change up as well. Kind of that three-quarter release type guy. How about opponents only hitting 227 off of Mayer? You've been to Marthersville, Missouri? I've not. Okay. I grew up in the state, but I've not been there. Missed last season as a medical redshirt, began his college career at St. Charles Community College. Really good freshman campaign, then went to the Appy League. Played for Greenville. Six and one with 51 strikeouts the next year. Stovall swings, drives one high and deep towards the roof again. Home run, Peyton Stovall. All nine Arkansas runs this series have come on the long ball, and they've taken out a few chunks of the Hunt Family Development Center. Up, out, and gone. Home run number 22 for the Hogs, and they have hit them in bunches as of late. Well, number 10's fired up, and that's got to be a good feeling for Peyton Stovall. Really dropped the head on that pitch, and you can see him with just great extension. He wanted to admire that one just a little bit. He got all of it. You can see DVH's reaction off the top, caromed back down onto the field. First run of the game. And we see you too. Aloy drives one high in the air, deep left field towards the hog pen. The Hogs go back to back. Stovall and Aloy, and it's 2 0 Razorbacks. And all 10 runs of the series have come on homers. And the hog pen, a happy place to be. Hey, Brad, how about a 36 degree launch angle for Vahiva Aloy? He barely let us get settled in, and he was taking another big hack at a hanger. Boy, he knew he got that one, and it just carried out. That's some big-time reactions for those fans in there. And look at that. <laughs> they, the Arkansas dugout is fired yes, up. Yes, I would say they are. The youngsters always know where the cameras are at. Didn't work out the way Mayer would have hoped, and uh, we'll see if Coach Jackson is in that Missouri bullpen. So this is Mayer's game right now. Kendall takes a strike, 0 for 2 in the game with a pop-up. Ball that a strike to Kendall Diggs. Is there some pressure to hit one now when your teammates ahead of you, both of them have homered? Are you thinking back to back to back? Uh, you know, it's in the in the back of your mind. You're just trying to have a good quality at bat right here. And a couple really good pitches by by Mayer on Diggs to start off. Mayer really wants it out to begin this process. Will they get one here? Pop up. And Hernandez will not have a play. It's a couple of rows beyond the edge of the dugout. This was Kendall a night ago. It came in the fourth inning. It won 400 feet, and I never saw it come down. Just kind of disappeared into the darkness. Diggs waiting on a 1-2. Swinging a foul ball right back. Home run, Peyton Stovall. Home run, Vahiva Aloy. Kendall Diggs shoots one to left field. Have the Hogs gone back to back to back? Yes, they have. Stovall, Aloy, and Diggs. 
and things traveling threes, and the hog pin is up for grabs. The Hawks have found their long ball stroke again. Just a great quality at bat by Kendall Diggs. Took for the fit first pitch right down the chute, and then nice pitch by Mayer in the, the second pitch. He found one in the zone. He didn't try to pull this baseball. He does, it's gonna go to second base. Just a great job to let that ball travel and drive it to the opposite field. There was a split second. I wasn't sure if he had quite enough, but is he counting threes right there? He as is he counting comes threes. <laughs> well, now I mentioned this a couple of times. In the minor leagues when Joe Nathan was pitching for the Giants system, I had four consecutive home runs and it was I think one of just a couple of times in the history of a league that lasted more than 100 years. Well, it won't happen here. Holt hit the hardest ball <laughs> yet and uh, lines out to third. But four straight home runs, about as rare as you can ever imagine. But uh, Peyton hit a bullet, but he's out, retired by Cologne. Boy, it just really shows what a great job that Pimentel did keeping Arkansas off balance for as long as he did. Well, McLaughlin is hitless so far in this series. He'd love to change that 0 for 6, getting a right-hander here. Bro, we got a shocker. We've got Arkansas with more hits than runs. That hasn't happened in a while. It has not. Last night, eight runs, seven hits. But again, all the 11 runs have come on the long ball in this series. That's a little bit in. We mentioned it even when it was 0-0 through 5. It felt like these were hitter-friendly conditions. The wind was going to help. It wasn't going to hurt. You get a hold of a ball, it's going to go. It's going to fly. And uh, the Hogs have showed us that as McLaughlin takes a 3-0 strike. Pimentel really did a nice job of keeping Arkansas off balance. Mayer's just trying to swim to shore right now, and that is ball four. <laughs> Dugout's been a happy place here in the sixth inning for the Razorbacks. <laughs> did, did we have to resuscitate anybody? Got to have some fun. I'm just happy to know Ben Bybee's okay after all the, <laughs> the mononucleosis. Man. And, uh, you know, he had a hamstring tweak, I think, at some point. Uh, apparently, you know, the flu's gone through this clubhouse as well. It's taken out Bobby Wernus today, and it took out Matt Hobbs on Tuesday. I'm glad I don't spend a, a, as much time down there as I used to, right? Yeah, I know. Got to use a little extra hand sanitizer when you're down the dugout. Jason Jones is 0 for 2. Mayor's probably best pitch right there. It was a slider on the outside <laughs> corner, just painted to black. You know what Arkansas started to do, Troy? They have adopted this uh, little gorilla and it goes to the player who's the most aggressive and you know angry of the game and so so last night Sousa got the gorilla and then there's a gorilla mask that goes with this as well now Kendall Dix <laughs> on so there's a gorilla mask and there is a pet gorilla so apparently Sousa was carrying around the gorilla yesterday and you know he's signing autographs somebody had to hold it and now Sousa gets to bestow it upon the uh, player of the game today and there are a few candidates all of a sudden as Jones wears that one. And back-to-back uh, -back three base runners after Holt lined out for the first out this inning. So uh, you every gotta year you got to have something different. you got to have some fun in the dugout. Do you realize our original home run prank guy, Hunter Wilson, was here the other day when Oral Oh, oh there wow. we go. Well, I didn't would, realize it was that big. He would he would slam the, the hog hat. That's right. Wilson was here because he played for both ORU and Arkansas. And then uh, Chad Spanberger was here the other day, too. Oh, wow. For ORU. 
But here's Souza, so he's responsible for that gorilla, but not now because he can't take it to the plate. And Souza walked and struck out. Of course, DVH was talking about Souza yesterday. You know, so just what a moment. You know, the guy's swinging at strikes. He's not swinging at balls. That's part of it. Really came back after the first of the year, ready to roll after the fall, which could be a bit eye-opening for any freshman to face Arkansas's pitchers in the fall and then try and compete. You know you're behind Stovall and Aloy and whatnot, and yet he's found his way into this lineup more often than not. Well, you keep swinging the bat the way he has, you're, you're going to find your name in the lineup. In the air to shadow center. This is going to be a long run, and a sliding catch is made by Peer. I wasn't sure if he was going to get there or not. Yesterday, when uh, Sousa homer the first time up at 98 miles an hour exit velocity, I think it was the lowest exit velo of the entire game for him, and that was the one he homered on the first time. Yeah, it, it didn't get out by much, and I was a little shocked. He, he kind of watched that one just a little bit, and I said, that didn't clear the fence by too much. But Arkansas are trying to take advantage of a couple free base runners here. Missouri trying to get out of this jam. And Lovich will bat. He got the first Arkansas single with two outs in the fifth inning and a little jam job and flare out into left center. Two on and two out. And that's a strike over the inside corner for Mayor Delovich. Do we have Ty Wilmsmeyer running at first base? I believe we do. Running for Jason Jones. Might move him at the center field. Lovich to left. Big wave and a miss by Lovich. Arkansas scored all three of their runs this inning. Might not mind a little more. The Tigers really would love to get back into the dugout in the seventh. That ball sliced to the gap, left center field. It is down. It's going to go all the way to the fence. It's going to score two. And now Lovich around second on his way to third base with a two-run triple. And the Razorbacks have taken a 5-0 lead. Here laid out for it, couldn't get it. And then Lovich just cruised into third base. The yeah, off the bat, you thought that Peer might have had a play on it, and that ball just continued to slice away from him. The spin off the left-hand bat of Lovich, you can see it just keep carrying away from him. It was a great effort, but as soon as that ball got by him, you knew that Lovich was going to be standing on third. How about another couple free base runners for Arkansas coming across the walk to McLaughlin, the hit by pitch to Jones. Not sure where Lowman, Missouri is as well, but. What's for crying out loud, there, Troy, you're I'm a Missouri you. native. <laughs> These are some small towns. The last one was over by St. Louis, I'll give you that. All right. Miller's gonna sit in the upper 80s with that fastball. Rolling the batter, the ball kicks away. Lovich on the wild pitch will score to make it six to nothing. And that's not the way Miller wanted to start his outing. Yeah, Hernandez did all he could do to try to block that one, but that's about a 54 footer. Not much to complain about today. Just waiting for your turn for Vahiva Aloy. Talk about an explosion right there. How about Arkansas in the sixth inning? Troy, this is what good offenses can do. And I know Arkansas maybe is a good offense that's waiting to show it on a more regular basis. But if the pitcher like Pimentel, who's doing a great job keeping them off balance, I'm sure the feeling was in that dugout. Get this guy out of the game and let's take our cracks against somebody else and maybe we can put forth different results. Yeah, I think so. And I, it, that, that just shows that you know, Arkansas was patient. They pushed that pitch count up of Pimentel, and he, he was outstanding. But, uh, again, there's, there's only so much you can do. And got to that Missouri bullpen and really took advantage of it. 
three and two to Roland. Ninth man to hit this inning. And now we'll turn it over and Stovall who began this inning with a homer just missing being up on the roof gets to bat again. So the electrician Jerry might have to go up there and wait to see if he can retrieve another one. Sometimes a few of those balls last night may have walked in the front door at Foghorns and ordered a drink. I think so. <laughs> might have just bounced across the street and gone in for a, a beverage or two. Which doesn't sound like a bad idea. So Charlie Miller is just kind of getting thrown into the deep end of the pool right here. This is uh, came in only thrown five and a third innings, and you're going okay. Here's conference play. It's only human to sit out there in the bullpen and watch what Arkansas has done this inning, and you're thinking, I've got to be fine. I, I can't be over the heart of the plate. I can't hang a pitch. And then in so doing, you find yourself behind hitters. Yeah, you walk one, and now you're 2-0 against Peyton Stovall. It's not a good place to be. Stovall will take, and that's a good one for a strike. Is that the changeup? Yeah, well, that's a really nice changeup, 2-0. Not giving in was Charlie Miller. Might throw that one back to back right here. Went behind him. Remember, he was hit by a pitch earlier. In fact, in the first inning, and that one goes to the backstop. So that's the second wild pitch of the frame. Arkansas has also had three hit batters in this ball game. So we talked about the the free base runners that. Missouri just felt like they couldn't afford this Arkansas team to have any extra bodies on the bases. There's still no. They've That's, been loud hits, though. They, they have. 3-1 to Stovall, and that's ball four. So, Vahiva Loy, who homered earlier this inning, has a chance for two. So, Vahiva had two homers all year. He has a chance for two homers in this inning. And they will come in bunches, I believe, for Bahiba at times. I think he's one of those guys get hit, you know, four in a week or something like that. I wouldn't put it past him. He had to get his fellow Hawaiian out of the game in Pimentel. Nice breaking ball. Six runs home this inning. Rolling at second, Stovall at first. And that one, same pitch, but it didn't break as much and it stayed high, one and one. Arkansas has hit seven home runs in the series. Three of them by Hawaiians. <laughs> Sue's had two <laughs> yesterday. Lovich and Diggs. Did you ever think you're going to say that? Kansas City natives <laughs> and Hawaiians and are Hawaiians. hitting a lot of home runs. There you go. And then mix in a Stovall. <laughs> Aloy got that off the end of the bat. He's not going to get a second home run. <laughs> a Brady Tiger to not have his good stuff and still keep the opponent scoreless. Will McIntyre is going to get one out on one pitch. That's Wilmsmeyer in center, retiring Garcia. Lovich moves to left, and there's one gone for Jadier Hernandez. And I talked to Hernandez before the game, Troy. I saw him in the Appy League a couple of years ago. Gets to be part of that All Star game with MLB. And, uh, you know, he was at Seton Hall, and he said, This place is incredible. <laughs> He did say there was an 11 year old girl heckling in the bullpen yesterday. <laughs> I said, well, starting him young. <laughs> you got to tough it up a little bit. But he said, this feels like the minors. And, you know, he's just kind of soaking it all in. And I would imagine playing at Seton Hall, and he didn't get rung up on a swing there. So it's 1 0. It is a little bit different when you get this flavor. He kind of took that to the edge, but not a strike call. And I said, you know, you could be here when there's more fans here. And he goes, how? And I said, well, there's an empty seat here, and there's four or five there. When LSU comes to town, you won't find them. No, no, they're, that's going to be a hot ticket for sure. 2-0 pitch taken for a called strike. 
But sometimes I just enjoy talking to players, and oftentimes it's in the non-conference series when these teams roll in here that haven't had this experience, just to kind of see what they see, you know, how the other half lives. Because, you know, as a, a mid-major player in those non-con games, it's a lot of fun. And Hernandez will ground out here to Stovall. But, uh, you know, this is the first weekend. So, you know, you haven't been through the rigors yet of a couple of road trips, maybe to Old Miss or State or whatever. Yeah, it's, LSU. it's impressive. And uh, I, I tell you what, when – You've not played in front of that many fans. It, 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 it does make you just a little bit nervous. I think so. I mean, you have to be aware as pure bats. And that's why I kind of enjoyed having Jeff Blum up here. I mean, this is a guy that goes to a big league game every night for the 35,000 people on average. And you come here, but you can still appreciate this experience that's so different than so many other college venues. Pitch a little bit high. Stuart it home. And it's one of the reasons why Arkansas has enjoyed a lot of success in this ballpark. And they're trying to win their 12th straight game of the season here today. You know, we haven't even mentioned it all today in a couple of hours. This is the number one team in the country. You know, I mean, it kind of gets <laughs> overlooked a little bit. Yeah, you just kind of get used to the, all the success. And I think uh, Dave Van Horn has really spoiled this fan base of just the consistency year in, year out. 3 will pitch in there for a strike. And, you know, football didn't go the way I, I think anybody would have liked. There was great anticipation for basketball, you know, the Purdue game and Duke and whatnot. And then basketball had kind of a rough finish. So I, I think fans have turned towards baseball as they normally do at this time of the year as Pierre waves and misses. And that level of expectation, that, you know, that, that attention just kind of gets magnified. Yeah, it's kind of taken a little bit of a tick up, I believe. McIntyre has battled back to send the count full, and he's going to get a pop-up here that Holt will pay a courtesy visit on, but it's up on top of the roof and out of play. Pierre would love to get hit number two for Missouri. Just find a hole somewhere. Swing a foul off the foot. How many times has somebody fouled a ball off their ankle or shoe in this uh, game and a half? Too many. It just shows, like, how Arkansas is just the spin on the those pitches, just getting a little bit of it and hitting them straight down. McIntyre ready with another payoff pitch to Caden Peer. And that's ball four. So the Tigers have been patient today. They've made these Razorback pitchers work even when they have just the one hit so far in this game. Yeah, they've, they've drawn some walks, hit batter. Five walks, couple of hit batters. Just anything you can do to get on base. Here's Brock Daniels. I've seen him at the uh, youth level a little bit. Started with the Sooners in Oklahoma. St. Louis native. <laughs> uh, fans were saying they were watching on TV and it's a strike. Well, I can assure them it was not. <laughs> no, it was, it was quite in. <laughs> Two at home. Danny Cricks has had a really solid zone as yep. well as Morris Hodges is not a go. It's amazing, again, when you have that ability of technology, whether you're a hitter to understand the zone or you're an umpire and, you know, you're graded on it, you're evaluated. Hitters have batting averages and numbers and playing time is reflective of how good they are. You start to understand what that universal zone is. And there's no longer I have a zone and you have a zone. There right. is a zone. It, it is really just kind of taking umpiring to another level. I would agree. Two balls, two strikes. Daniels was hit by a pitch in the fifth against Tigert. He really is shortening up on the bat here, and he's going to wave and miss. That's a strikeout. So Mizzou has just one hit. Whatever they can do, any <laughs> advantage. No, they've never seen snow. They've never seen a hill. Kendall Diggs against a new pitcher, a left-hander, Magdish, working here in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, really big-bodied lefty, Ryan Magdish. 6'5", 240. He'll sit around 90, 91 with that fastball, mixing a slider and a change as well. Kendall homered on the back end of three straight last inning. For Diggs, it was home run number five. Got a Canadian 
He's seen snow, I guarantee you that. <laughs> yeah. And then some <laughs> feet of snow. I was doing a Zoom the other day, maybe just a couple of days ago, with some people in Colorado, and they were late getting on. And finally, somebody pops on and said, hey, uh, sorry, we had 12 inches of snow last night. Yeah, it, it, they got hammered. Uh, that, uh, some good for some snow skiers, and that's oof. about it. Diggs with a big wave of the miss. One of the few times he'll expand the zone just a bit. Nice pitch from Magdish to get the K to begin. The Hawks have a thinning. That was a good one right under the hands of Kendall yeah. Diggs. Magdish has got a little bit more juice than what the scatter report said. He's been running one up to 93, 94. Got a really short arm that, those short arm guys, the, the, the ball just gets on those hitters a little bit faster. Peyton Holt lined to third his last time in. He's 0 for 2. Did walk back in the first inning. Peyton starting at third this afternoon. Hits a chopper to third to Cologne. He's going to have to hurry that throw, and that's a strong toss across the diamond, retiring Holt. Two gone. Cologne took the big hop, and when you've got a gun like that, you can take a little extra time getting to that baseball. Ben McLaughlin is 0 for 2. He did walk and score last inning. He scored the first run of the series that didn't come on a homer when Lovich tripled with two outs past the diving pier in center. Sharply hit to second, but right at Austin. And the Hogs go quickly and in order in the seventh inning. Nice job by McDeesh. We go to the eighth inning. Six nothing Arkansas. Just play it through. Uh, <laughs> This is Trevor Austin, who has the only Missouri hit when he singled in the fourth inning. Yesterday, he doubled in the fourth inning, and that was the first Missouri hit. Yeah, Austin has been a lot of their offense so far, and Arkansas pitchers have just kept these Tiger hitters off balance. Last year, he made 54 starts between second base and left field at 59 hits and had eight homers. Played some games as a freshman in 21 and 22 as a sophomore. You know, last year, what Mizzou did in that opening series, and it wasn't exactly warm. They were at home in Columbia. They swept Tennessee. And there's a high pop-up on the right side of the diamond. McLaughlin, it's his play, and he'll make the catch one out. And I think that was a really big weekend for the Tigers when they were able to, you know, take down a Tennessee team. Tony Vitello coming back to Columbia. And I know they'd love to get a win here, but it's looking more and more likely as if it'll have to be tomorrow if Hawks and McIntyre can shorten this game. Yeah, you're right. That was a, a really big series for Missouri last season because Tennessee had a, an excellent ball club and great pitching staff. And as I mentioned, with their win yesterday, they've won 17 in a row. Jackson Lovich back. Tony V's got things rolling over there in Knoxville. It's not a surprise. 17, that's hard Ooh. to win 17 straight games. Lovich lifts one to right. Diggs is there. He's got it. Two outs. Arkansas with that win yesterday, an 8 to nothing victory. In fact, they're trying to put forth back-to-back -back shutouts. The last time they had a shutout win in the SEC opener, it was against Missouri in 2019 in a 2-0 game. Well, yesterday was 8-0, now 6-0 here this afternoon, and Tigers down to their final four outs. Thomas Curry is 0 for 1. What's the term that Matt Hobbs says about Will McIntyre? He just swallows up innings. That man swallows up strikeouts. <laughs> and then some. I'd have a smile on my face, too, if I was Hagen Smith. All Hagen has done now in five starts is have 50 strikeouts, and he had one strikeout in the – or one inning in the first appearance. Yeah, that didn't even count. You just got to throw that one out. And that's where you look at his last three, and, you know, the numbers become that much more ridiculous. 22 innings and 48 strikeouts. That's a wave and a miss. McIntyre barely gives me time to – We're down to one as Wilmsmeyer bats. Magdish was awfully good last inning. Cruised through the seventh inning. 
There's a liner to the second baseman Austin. So Wilmsmeyer hit a rocket, but his former teammate made the catch. It's one of those swings that off the bat you're thinking, okay, if you have the speed of Wilmsmeyer, you're thinking that might might get to the gap and might be able to kick the Jets on and get the third. Well, there are the Seminoles, 16 and 0, the last undefeated Division I team, hosting the Fighting Irish in an ACC opening weekend series. But Notre Dame is leading in the eight. Wow. And here's Souza. Sousa's 0 for 2. He's been hit by a pitch. Facing a tough lefty now in his third at bat. This is why, the, you know, you think you get off to a great start, and he did, and then all of a sudden you're facing two or three different pitchers. You're facing a tough lefty, and you're trying to squeak out a hit today. He's hit by a pitch in his first plate appearance, and he didn't quite care for that, but uh, the count's 1 and 2 after the strike was called. Yeah, Magdish has looked really good as he's coming out of that bullpen. Just missed off the corner. Magdish wanted the K. About 95. Giddy up. That's a wave of a miss. So Magdish has come on, Troy, faced five, retired five, and struck out two. Boy, he has looked outstanding. You wonder if he's one of those guys that might even be able to come back and throw again tomorrow. But, boy, that short arm swing and the slider's got some really good bite. The fastball, the velocity's there. And the command has been spot on as yeah, well. really good. Really impressive. It's quite the necklace he's got on as well. Got some bling. <laughs> it does. Lovich tripled in a couple of runs back in the sixth. He's two for three, and he's hit into a double play. The RBIs have really jumped up. Ross had 12 RBIs over his last 23 at bats, and then he tacked on two more. So 14 runs driven in over a 26 at bat stretch. Were it not for the fact that he was going to face a left-handed starter, he might have been by batting much higher in the lineup today than eighth. Yeah, I think so. And, again, if he keeps swinging the bat the way he is, he's going to see his name on that lineup. Waving a miss. So, Magdish, two perfect innings. He's outstanding. We go to the ninth. Can the Razorbacks get back-to-back? -back? Nice afternoon for baseball. Right now, the Tigers would like to get on the board. Jackson Beeman facing McIntyre. Troy, all he has done is just rear back and pump strikes. Yeah, he is just... Picking apart those Tiger hitters, mixing in the fastball and the cutter, and I don't think you've seen anything else. Maybe a breaking ball or two, but that's about it. Maybe that was one that he yeah, bounced. Yeah, he just overthrew that one, didn't want to hang the curve. Anything under 80 is, is that breaking ball. Max not going to be out done with a nice chain nope. as well, too. Got maybe a battle not, of uh, necklaces. Maybe not quite as much bling, but. Not as shiny. Bouncer to short. Aloy will charge. Throws that dart across the diamond. Retires Beeman to begin the Missouri ninth inning. So McIntyre and Tiger are trying to combine on a one-hit shutout. McIntyre is just one of those guys, his personality looks like he's just strolling through the park. Unaffected. But, yeah. Mac goes a little old school, like no T-shirt underneath the uni. He just throws on the jersey and is ready to go. Two and another count. It's high again. McIntyre is going to get a pop-up 3-0. So 
Cologne was swinging away, and there is McLaughlin and Missouri down to its final out. You're a little surprised by that when you're yes. down six <laughs> in the ninth. You need base runners. It's up to Matt Garcia. He's 0 for 3. So Missouri has had one runner reach third base in the series. Uh, it's just a testament to this Arkansas pitching staff. And talk about just bowing your neck and just going out there and doing a job. Pumping strikes. Tigers down to their final out, final strike in the ninth inning as the fans come to their feet here at Bob Walker. The one two is chopped foul wide at first. That's a nice play over there at first base. One ball, two strikes. On the appeal, no swing, says our third base umpire, Morris Hodges. Earpiece at all, it's two and two. Garcia able to check against McIntyre. Allows the uh, drama to build maybe a little bit more. And the 2 2 pitch. Strike three called. Tigert and McIntyre combined to blank Mizzou on one hit. And back to back to back home. Declare. 